everybody, and welcome to the Fan of Vlogs podcast episode 6 7. From... Uh, welcome to the casting of pods. Oh my god. <laughs> zero was in rare form today, though I'm sure you have zero interest in that. Rare is it <laughs> undercooked, perhaps? Uh, so, I'm Casey, how's it going? And zero's here. Look, I don't know why it's called a podcast, but it's I do know they that... used to be on iPods, and then uh, <gasps> it was something that you would cast on an iPod, like a That's broadcast. That's some awesome history. That's I forgot that much was well enough now. I didn't know. But maybe if we cast our nets, we'll catch some pods. By the way, kids, iPods are devices that people used to wear before everything was on phones. Uh, it oh only gosh. played music. So there's people who exist. There's people who exist that don't know what iPods are, and that hurts me somewhere. Yep. Odds are that in a few years, the term MP3 player will be out of out of use. It basically is. I know. Yeah. So, I, I, God, I remember back in the day when people were first getting iPods and I had this little MP3 player that was like a little, you know, about the size of a finger. And it was like, hey, this can hold like 40 songs. <sighs> wow. Yeah. Technology oh is a cruel mistress. So, <laughs> patience also here. Hello, everyone. I'm not Kenshi618, and I'm sorry if I'm disappointing you as a result of that. Don't worry, Kenshi disappoints everyone as well. You're, you're doing a good job if you want to stand in for it. So. It's really easy to burn somebody when they're not here. Yeah, it is. Also, when he's here, because all he would say is, Hey, fuck you. That's literally <laughs> all he'd come back with, so it's fine. I, I was complimenting him. I wasn't, so. <laughs> yeah. I'm well aware. So, Zero, what have you been doing? Nothing? Um, been, I've been playing a little bit more Bloodstained. That's a good game. Um, I played that too. That's basically all I have to talk about this week, so let's get that out of the way. <laughs> it's a good game. Um, don't have any major complaints with it um, at the moment, because I'm not that far in it still. Uh, I've been uh, doing my D&D stuff um, had an entire session where there was no combat but they were in an area that was um, completely dark um, and magically so and nobody could see through it and they had to traverse it while something was lurking in the dark and make some self checks and a lot of them were wearing heavy armor so that that makes them fail a lot more with disadvantage. It was really tense, and I think I may have given them gray hairs. Which makes me happy. Mm. Um, yeah, D&D's been lots of fun. Um, um, one of my friends, uh, I don't think I mentioned this, but one of my friends started DMing. Um, and I, I DM two games. I DM a game every other Thursday, and then the other Thursdays are now that friend's turn to DM, and I DM on Saturday. And because I'm going to be out of town this week, I DM'd uh, yesterday. So, I, so if you've never DM'd a game of Dungeons & Dragons before, uh, I highly recommend it because it's a lot of fun and it's very rewarding. But at the same time, like, it wipes you out completely. Like, you just want to pass out afterwards. It's it's so much mental stress and having to think of all the different things in the world and all the different rules. And, yeah, I, I can see, like, when a session from Critical Role goes long, Matthew Mercer is just like, okay, we've been going for a while. 
Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I got, uh, uh, I woke up like an hour ago. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Me too. Uh, by the way, caught up on Critical Role on up to episode 69 of Campaign yeah. 2. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, the whole boat slash Ford arc was... That, that can be a slog to get through, but, like, when you're through that, everything is... It gets a lot more interesting. And I like the direction that it's going a lot. Man, the Mighty Nine screw up so much. Yeah. They, like, I, yeah. I, I only got up to, like, 22, 23, but, yeah. That was a running theme from the very beginning. Like, with Fox Machina, <clears throat> they're, they're heroes at the end of the day. They, they mess up every now and then, but they... they their heroes they make the world a bit better yeah generally a bunch of intelligent perceptive usually intelligent and wise people and sometimes they just say fuck it and have fun that's fine the mighty nine are more not intelligent and kind of dumb and dopey a lot of the time and make really poor decisions most of the time <laughs> They're they're a traveling disaster, and I love it. It's a very different feel of the show because it's just like, did we just really screw up there? <clears throat> we're, we're walking away from this quest with nothing. What did we do? Why did we do that? What's going on? Yeah, I'm really liking it a bunch of schmucks that really don't know what they're doing. <laughs> uh, which kind of is similar to uh, the Thursday game I GM where everybody's a bunch of uh, murderers and uh, just generally not great people. I mean, mm. they, they try to be good, but they're not great. <clears throat> and then there's like one character who's like, I will never hurt a single living being. And I'm the healer. I just want everybody to not murder people, please. Can we not do this? Hmm. You know, it, it's funny, actually, now that I think about it. Like, the setting for the second campaign of Critical Role is basically a place where they're really not big fans of adventurers. Like, anything that adventurers do, or mercenaries do, they credit to, you know, the military instead. Mm-hmm. And the Mighty Nine are kind of the poster childs for why they don't like adventurers. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I don't think that was deliberate, but it works out narratively. <laughs> Which is a lot of the fun of D&D, just accidentally making a good story. Because, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's, <clears throat> it's so much fun. Um, uh... I have another session today where I'm a player and I'm going to be uh, retiring one of my characters to play a different character. I found this uh, homebrewed class called Scholar, which is really interesting. It's uh, intelligence-based, which few classes are, and they use superiority to, uh, as academic superiority. It's, it's really interesting. Um, so... Yeah, I I kind of want to link that because it, it's if you're into D and D, this is a fun class to look at. Sounds a very uh, would, would... non-combat based class, kind of like the civilian classes from third edition. So you got um, different branches, which are physician, <laughs> politician, and tactician. Tactician is more combat based, right? Mm. Uh, politician is very much relying on uh, fear and charm and being more supporty and then tactician is you're you're or not, not that physician is you're literally a a surgeon on the field just doing mid combat surgery and trying to resuscitate people with science that sounds interesting got the d8 yeah this mm-hmm. yeah and you get to choose discoveries, which are like um, kind of like the Eldritch Invocations of Warlock, where you choose these kind of special 
bonuses um, that kind of can customize your class. It's really interesting. Hmm. But, you know, you don't get a lot of classes that <clears throat> use intelligence because the only class that uses intelligence, um, well, there's two actually. It's Mystic and then Wizard. Mystic yeah. being the psionic and wizard being, hey, you know, wizard. This yeah. is and basically a every, every other arcane class uses charisma for that shit. Then it's, yeah. Yeah, or wisdom. <clears throat> but uh, this is an intelligence based class that doesn't have anything to do with magic. You get no spells whatsoever. Which I like. It's like, mm. yeah, you're, you're just smart. Uh, you want to play Sherlock Holmes? Sure, go for it. I would love to see some player try to play Sherlock Holmes. I would love to see somebody <clears throat> try to play a character who thinks they're Sherlock Holmes and it isn't. Hmm. I feel like I've seen that in a Puffin Forest video. Probably. I like Puffin Forest. He does good stuff. Mm-hmm. I love Absurd. And th the friendly Ab Abolith in the lake. It's fucking great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, guys. Uh, I don't get a lot of visitors down here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm really good at... You, sh uh, you should be careful, boy. though. I heard there's a big, scary monster down here. <laughs> I hear about it, and I get scared. <laughs> <laughs> he's talking about himself, isn't he? Yeah, he's talking about himself. He's got, he's got a split personality. D and D's a lot of fun. Um, I genuinely like enjoy it, and it's nice to be a player because it's just like, hey, now I can. Now that I know all the <clears throat> rules from DMing, or well, at least know most of them, this helps a lot when trying to decide how to do things and how to make it through the game. So I recommend everybody DM at least once. Also it helps to be a bit more understanding of the DM when they're like, ah, uh, I don't know. Mm. Which happens sometimes. Yeah. Uh, aside from that, um, I'm sure that the world has heard that KFC is doing the new Cheetos sandwich. Uh, no, I had not heard this. Mostly because <laughs> I'm in Britain and we don't have Cheetos. And also in my city we don't have KFC. But Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, you want it? Here, here, I'll share an image. Okay. This is our, our new promotion that I have to share. Which one are Cheetos? Yeah. Are those the puffy ones or are those the crinkly ones? Crunchy. Look at this. Yeah, they're knickknacks in this country, or oh, that's what they're called. Look at this. Isn't this? Isn't this just? Doesn't this just make you want to die? A little bit, yeah. Like I don't know what that adds to the sandwich. Well, my dad, being you know working at KFC, <clears throat> um, he brought. Uh, he went down to the local news station and he didn't get to appear on TV unfortunately because they hadn't uh, cleared him for that but he did make the sandwiches that they showed off on the news at a local news and he brought home the Cheetos sauce that we put on the sandwich there's a sauce I don't care and you take it I, I tried it it, it it tastes like a liquid Cheeto, and I don't know how I feel about that. Bad? I'd, I'd guess bad. Kinda. Mm. Maybe. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I was, I was working uh, yesterday when they launched that. And also, apparently now I, I need to wear a, a headset uh, when I cook, which, you know, is so I can hear the drive-in and what yeah. people are taking. Take orders and such things. No, well, I'm take. not taking orders, but just so I can hear and, and know when to make chicken and stuff. I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay. I'm happy with that. I like more information. Yeah. Cheetos. 
I like Cheetos, but but did anyone actually order one? Yes, we we sold a, a few. Ugh. You look on Twitter and it's just like, most people are like, ugh. But then you get that one person who's like, delicious. I want one. Is KFC one of those restaurants that doesn't like to have cheese on the chicken sandwiches? No, we don't typically have cheese on them. We have different sauces. and Because um, I feel like this easier. is just an excuse to have a cheese flavor thing without having actual cheese. And that's... Well, we have... Well, my, my, at, my, at my store, we have cheese. We put it on the cheeseburgers for the A&W. Uh, we have cheese that we use for the famous bowls. We don't put cheese on the chicken sandwiches. We put like a mayo and then some pickles. Normally, missing a trick. I don't. I don't know why that's not a thing in more places. Like I do that all of the time. I literally have a pack of like Mexican pepper cheese in the fridge, specifically to put on microwavable chicken burgers. Because yeah. those don't come with cheese either. Like nothing. To... They're they're good with cheese. Chicken yeah. and cheese is a good combination. I'm just. Man, if you could put anything on a chicken sandwich, it's like, well, I guess. I, 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 who thought of the Cheetos? Uh, branding. I, I'm I'm gonna ask my dad that because I'm curious. Uh, it, I, he's I, gonna say branding. I assume it's like KFC is owned by a food groups company that I think yeah, but you used can to own sell Pepsi. Cheetos and. You can sell Cheetos in the store, but why do you put them in a sandwich specifically? Branding. Brand synergy. Hey, look at this thing that we can do because we own both of these things. It's like when you had the you have the Doritos tacos at uh, Taco Bell. Hmm. Where, it's where like, hey, I'm going to try this weird sandwich that KFC have created. And, ang. This is not that great, but I do. I, I I would prefer just to have Cheetos on their own, so I guess I'll buy some I, on my way home. I have yet to try one, but I have. But apparently, the the news crew that were served these liked them, so maybe it's good. I don't know. I mean, there's nothing ostensibly terrible about the idea, but and, and I'm not I'm not advertising for KFC. It's just my life. Yeah, it, it's it's just that, 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 that there I'm... there are better alternatives that aren't purely for entirely cynical branding reasons. You could just put a slice of fucking cheese on there. Is all I'm saying. Anyway, <laughs> all that said, I'm going to go see Spider Man tonight. Oh yeah, that came out, didn't it? I, I've got like yeah, I've got to wait a week because that's how I do films. Is just waiting for a week so that I can watch them in relative comfort and peace. I've heard good things. I had um, some friends of the family went down and they saw the premiere. Um, you know, very first night. Because um, they're in South Cali and they can just do that. Hmm. Uh, but, yeah, they liked it. Said it was good. I... Can't wait to find out the twist about Mysterio because there's obviously going to be a twist. Hmm. And the twist is that Mysterio, the classic Spider-Man villain, is a Spider-Man villain. That's what I'm hoping for. Or the twist is he's not a Spider-Man villain and he is actually a good guy because he's from an alternate reality and that's if kind of a thing that he's... is very common trope for alternate realities is all the good guys are bad guys and bad guys are good guys. Yeah, but what if... What if... What if the, what if he's lying about being alternate reality? Or what if he's from an alternate reality, but then he's killed by the real myst- by the Mysterio of our reality, and then is replaced, and so it's a bad Mysterio. Oh, that'd be cool. That would actually be pretty cool. Because <laughs> that's what I'm thinking is going to happen. It's <laughs> like, yeah, I'm a good guy. It's like, no, I'm the bad guy, Mysterio. And you can't have my face. It's mine. 
even though I hide it in a fishbowl. That's... Look, it's mysterious. Hmm. That's why it's called Mysterio. <laughs> uh, I'm excited. Yeah. Should be good. I want at least one J. Jonah Jameson cameo. That's all I need, and, and then it's great. Just just one. Hmm. Give me angry, angry man yelling at Spider Man. Yeah, that this seems like it's about the time where a character like that should be introduced. Like when he's supposed to be stepping up as a bigger time hero. And if that's the case, we need a voice that's trying to shout him down at the same time. Mm hmm. Yeah. Bring me those pictures of Spider Man. Right now, on my desk. I, I mean, need them. In the age of fucking camera phones, I feel like there's plenty of pictures of Spider Man. <laughs> I need more pictures of Spider-Man. I have a, I have a, I have a zipped folder for all my pictures of Spider-Man. No, it's WinRAW. We have a license. <laughs> <laughs> I bought the license. It kept popping up, so I bought it. <laughs> Kids, WinRAW was a program that existed <laughs> about twenty years ago. Oh my god. For unzipping a very uh, decompressing a very specific file type that only could be compressed and decompressed with a WinRAW program that you had to pay a license for, and it had like a free trial, and everyone broke the free trial to make it work forever. Yes. <clears throat> Although nowadays, if something's zipped, you can just use like Seven Zip. Yeah, Seven Zip works on pretty much it. I I did get some uh, raw files that wouldn't open with Seven Zip recently, so I had to get WinZip, which also does raw files now for some reason. So I want my Win Win <laughs> fold files with Spider Man. I need all the pictures right here, zipped in on this hard drive. <laughs> it's on a USB flash stick. These are new things. Uh, I'll add you to my Google Drive folder as well. Just drop the pictures in there. I didn't expect to wake up feeling old today. <laughs> this was not how I expected my day to go. <clears throat> You're old. Uh, Let's talk about the dial-up sound now. Fucking Christ. <laughs> Oh gosh, yeah, people, there are people who have never heard them, so any gag using the dial-up sound will just never land. Mm. But, um, yeah, freaking, give me some J. Jonah Jameson, uh, and I just want him yelling at the clouds about Spider-Man. And... You can do whatever you want. You can, you can make him be in like an old folks home or whatever, but I want him yelling about Spider-Man at something. <clears throat> that That's the Spider-Man that I know. I... It was a little on the nose, but I liked the video game thing they did with them. Where, you know... Yeah, he's a podcast. He's doing yeah. an online podcast. Yeah. Like, just a... A right-wing pastiche of a podcaster that talks a lot of shit about things with zero information backing them. Yeah. J. Jameson, Jameson is a patriot. He loves Captain America. Captain America <clears throat> is his favorite. There's, there's that comic panel where <clears throat> Captain America, though, get, like, gets up in J. Jameson's face because he's bullying Spider-Man. And he looks at the little mustache <laughs> that changed how much his ass, like <laughs> and then like next panel he, like <laughs> um J. Jonah Jameson has shaved off his little Hitler stash. It's just uh oh. <laughs> it's great. That's kind of adorable. <laughs> I gotta I gotta yeah. that. The cap disapproves, I need to get rid of this. <laughs> it's like ah. Oh. Um, Give me pictures of Captain America. <laughs> it's not. It's not for the newspaper. It's. It's just for me. I just. Need, I just. I have a WinRAR file. <laughs> 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 
right here. Safe and zipped. Premium By the way, program. kids, a newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Uh. <laughs> How does this keep... Oh, screw it. Anyway. You were saying... Anyway. Um, I, got, I got this new little cover on my <clears throat> mic. It's rather nice. Uh, audio quality might be sounding a little bit better than normal. Not quite sure. Sounds good, but I don't immediately have comparisons on end. So. Well, I... I its main purpose is reducing background noise, so I think it's been doing a good job so far. Cause my dog keeps barking. I'm now my dog's I, favorite. I haven't heard it, so yeah, cool. I've been careful to mute my mic when I hear it, but my uh, dog likes me so much that um, whenever my dog has a favorite, uh, which I am now the favorite, um, she gets very excited when you come down and you say hi. So excited that she will pee herself. <laughs> this has happened multiple times for multiple family members. <clears throat> this is a problem. We installed the doggy door in hopes that it would fix things, but she still gets very excited. So, here's hoping we have less. Um... So happy to see you, and then pee yourself immediately. Gosh, dogs are so weird. Mm. But I love them. Aside from all of that, and that ranting about J. Jomer James and, and Winrar, uh, yeah. I think that's about it for my <clears throat> week. Uh, except for, like, I'm going to be uh, leaving tomorrow to drive down to Huntington Beach for 4th of July. Uh, and there's a 4th of July parade and everything that happens down there, so. Woo. It's for my week. Right. Patient, you with us? Yes. Hello. What, what did you think of the old folks' conversation? Amusing. Mm, thank you. Mm. Happy to be of service. They're in youngins. <clears throat> on, the, on the note of old folks. My grandmother Sorry, patient. I uh, didn't catch that because Zero's mic was being loud. Weird. My, my grandmother passed in her sleep a couple of weeks ago. I'm sorry, dude. I'm so sorry, dude. Yeah. She didn't want a funeral, so she didn't get one. There's really, I really don't know how to react to it. She was there my whole life, but at the same time, I don't feel that broken up about it. That I knew it was coming. I don't know. My mother's taking it hard, though. Mm. It was her mother, of course. Yeah, um, she was with her in the end. Similar thing happened uh, when you know my mom lost her mom uh, a few years ago. So I know what it's like. So just don't know what more I can do to help get past that. But my mother's probably going to be particularly hard her father passed about 20 years ago on July 4th so the anniversary of his day no close yeah. just wish the more I could do for her Yeah, I mean, th there's not much you can do beyond just being there. Yeah. Just being someone who she can lean on at times, which 
as far as I'm aware from knowing you, that has always and will always be the case. So just keep being you. Keep being there. Yeah. Should try doing it a bit more now. Aside from that, every turn. And we're back to being short staffed. Apparently, after I left last, there was one more resignation every week. Basically. So, back to the unreasonable quotas with... It's just become clear at this point. I stick around because... Because of the respect I have for my manager. She... She goes out of her way to make sure that all... Hit our quotas, even if she doesn't... And the higher-ups see how hard she's working enough of them do that that it's fine I guess I don't I don't even but they keep pushing the numbers high it doesn't get any easier though making good enough progress I guess we'll see what happens in the future but I'm not sure I'll be leaving quite yet. Just <clears throat> until her time at the job is done, it's not too much to ask for me to keep going with how things are. It's not a bad job under her trumps. <sighs> I finished playing Persona. I was disappointed by the final boss. Mm. Narratively or gameplay construction wise? Both. I mean, well, no, not narratively, gameplay construction. It's just. You spend. You spend several consecutive minutes beating up this bland, <clears throat> almost. It's basically a statue that you keep attacking, and it does it does basic attacks back to you for several minutes until until finally it knocks you down in a scripted cutscene, and then more cutscenes happen. The finishing blow was epic and spectacular. I loved that. But what led up to it makes it feel like that big, drawn-out fight against him in the first place was all for nothing. Yeah, that's... <clears throat> that's a thing that Persona tends to do for its final, true, ultimate boss fights. Yeah. Like, it happened in 3, it happened in 4, and Golden. I mean, the first form of it, I was fine with that stationary. But <gasps> no worries. But the t just the gargantuan statue towering over they could have made it much more interesting. Eh, yeah. I suppose so, but I feel like it's a case where they were going for a certain type of for lack of a better term, theming. Um, and gameplay-wise, well, they do a lot of interesting things. You can really feel like they had some time constraints on them because they had to make a lot of cuts. Um, oh. Cutting out an entire second, not that second, an entire other party member uh, and cutting the game short. It's why, like, Royals coming out, they're adding more months to it. I mean, playing through it the first time, it was all kinds of just because it was a new experience. But looking back on it, it really does seem like a restricted sort of thing. And I am it again because I didn't finish the next. Uh, 
I didn't manage to max out all of my cards the first time. Mm. The second time through, I've beat the game twice. The second time through, um, it's much faster because A, you can just skip through most of the cutscenes, and B, you can usually skip through most of the grinding for stats and everything. Yeah. So, not as much. I'm not, I should clarify, I'm not doing New Game Plus. Just, it feels. I couldn't stand just the constant proof that I never managed to max out this comp for the last time I played through. So I'm saving New Game Plus for when I've done all of the confidants maxed out. Okay. That's an... he, here's, here's the thing. What you're talking about means playing the game three times through, and then Royal comes out. <laughs> like, you're going to burn yourself out on this game. <clears throat> I'm going to enjoy seeing the new different interesting things. I mean, Futaba can't even attack in this game. We've seen her dropping bombs in the trailer next one. I'm looking forward to that. But, yeah. but in any case, the game isn't finished until I've collected the troops. So, hmm. yeah, that at the very least requires new game plus because you can't do the secret boss except in new game plus, which was very annoying, by the way, because you know I tried so hard to get everything. Secret bosses places. always are. Yeah, typically. So, yeah, and of course to avoid making it too. Uh, too easy on myself for running the entire game again before I'm doing it on merciless mode oh. so here's... I have just I have just the, moved. <clears throat> the tutorial fights on hard can kill you with RNG alone Good to know. Hmm. So, worth yeah, I, keeping in mind. I think I saw how that could have happened when I went through that bit of it. But at this point, I've gotten past my maze palace. I'm just about to start the Kanashira section. My younger brother, when he was playing Persona 5, uh, did a full run through. Did not get all the confidants. Went through a second time. Got every single confidant. Except for the last rank of Moon. Which oh, was Moon. You, oh, that was... Yeah, I don't blame him for Which that you can miss, because that's sporadic when it appears. Well, it's not sporadic, but it, it it's requires something that's entirely separate from Confidants. It's, uh, you have to do the side quests. So then, he did a third run-through, and finally got all the uh, Confidants. The first time around, it was a mixture of poor time management and a lack of guts that prevented me from getting confidence the first time. You gotta go have those smoothies. Yep. Every Sunday. Mm-hmm. In the train station. I know what you're talking about. Well... In any case, at this point, I've started. I think I'm going to manage it this time. I've got, I've got the tricks in my to do this time around. I didn't even know about the gifts last time. Something else that I didn't know about. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't even realize that there were other tabs to the infiltration tools besides the one lockpick and stealth level, until I reached the seventh palace. Ooh, I'm trying to remember what were in the other tabs and whether they're worthwhile. There's a lot of helpful items in some. <clears throat> you I know, don't think... like the elemental attack things. Yeah. Escape buttons. The... Yeah, the vanish balls, the smoke bombs, or whatever they were, uh, those could come in handy on occasion, yes. And the ones that let you just back to the entrance to the metaverse, you get two around 
the first, second time that you enter Mementos. You and... didn't know go homes were a thing that you could make. Okay, yeah, okay. That's, yeah. That would have been mildly useful information, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There is another game that I got for the PlayStation for like I downloaded the re-release of Ape Escape 2. This oh. one, the one with the British voice actors. I like it because <laughs> the alternative was having the, the main protagonist have the four kids actor for Ash Ketchum. Yes. Yummy donuts. <sighs> In more. <sighs> I did like Spectre's voice better. American version of the game. But it's a lot more consistent. In in the British version. I mean, his voice actor changed every game I've seen. Shift from two to three was go from a dark low voice with a confident demeanor to a high pitched voice too jarring and speaking then again, of escape um, sorry interrupting you but have you heard about the potential for like a new ape escape or a remake um, because there was a Twitter account made called Pipasaro 20th, um, which, you know, is celebrating the 20th anniversary of Ape Escape, and it's being followed uh, by Sony's Twitter account, the Japanese Twitter account, which doesn't follow a lot. Uh, it's It's kind of adorable, but also kind of sad how... So many of these companies with nostalgic properties saw Crash Insane Trilogy with its ridiculous sales numbers and going, Oh my god, this is our time! And trying to crank out a remake or remaster. And I mean, escape needs it. Yeah, it the, looking, at, looking back at the game now, it is kind of on the tedious side. Just the same thing level to level and not that great scenery to look into. The controls are a bit lacking as well. I remember loving the game growing up with it, but yeah, no more need be said. I don't dislike just it's a, <clears throat> it's a bit too tedious for me to like persona. It's perhaps one of the disappointments of my childhood. Like, there was a rental store that was, like, five minutes away from my house. And we would rent games a bunch. And Ape Escape. Okay, sure. That could be fun. Don't know what it is. Took it home. This game requires a DualShock controller. Oh, no. Yeah, that game was one of the first games that required a DualShock controller. As in, before my house got one. So, yep. Couldn't play it. Was very annoyed. It's okay. I got Ape Escape and played it and still couldn't play it. Because I sucked at it and didn't know what to do. That's fair enough, then. But that just kind of reinforces the point of... Not exactly a nostalgia bomb is Ape Escape. Like, there are lots of people like it, though. There are some people that are down for it, but not in any it, way it the could, same kind of numbers as for Crash. It, oh, boy. It, could use, it could use a remake that improves a lot of the aspects of it. Personally, I would just be grateful for another game. I mean, obviously, to bring more life into the franchise, but. I really did love the quirky mini boss squad that Spectre employed in Ape Escape 2. Yeah. 
I would love to see a return of the Freaky Monkey. Good old Dave Escape. I mean, they've been on my mind of a while. Just, I'd like to see some kind of XP of them. They, I don't know why they stick out in my mind so much. Maybe it's just nostalgia, but yeah, pretty interesting characters that didn't get a whole lot of attention. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that. Man, monkey blue, monkey yellow. I'm thinking of monkey ball now. It's like, man, I want a more. I know a monkey ball game. I know it's a Kickstarter for one, uh, a fan made one. Versus, uh, I don't know. I mean, there's a, there's a bunch of marble games that are basically the same as Monkey Ball, only without the monkeys. Look, the monkeys won't make it. That's not true at all. Shut up. Hmm. Nice comeback. <laughs> Good job. Proud of you. <laughs> Anything else, Patient? Progress on the next couple of chapters of this fight has been rather slow. With job stuff. That's what we've got it planned out, and I think I think that what we have planned is brilliant, brilliant. And I tell you, genius, I say. Okay. Mm. Reference to Emperor's new smooth. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I so, remember very little of Emperor's New Groove. I don't remember any direct quotes. I haven't seen in a while. Except for that one scene right near the beginning with the old man. Don't interrupt the Emperor's Groove. Beware the groove. It's getting dragged away. It's pretty good. <laughs> That's all I remember. You are missing out so much, Casey. Oh, and the box thing with, with the villain. I'll turn him into a flea. Hey, ha, this little flea. Then I'll put that flea in a box, and then I'll put that box inside of another box, and then I'll mail that box to myself. And when it arrives, ha, <laughs> ha, smash with a hammer. Yeah, that one. Hmm. That's an incredibly convoluted and pointless play. Yeah, that's kind of the joke. Way to explain yeah. the joke. Good job. Proud of you. But she could have gone through with it anyway, considering what happened when she just decided to poison instead. <laughs> Turn him into the fleet, put him inside a box, and inside a box, and inside another box, and ship that box to yourself. Then deny it, have it be returned to sender. And then, <laughs> when it gets sent back to you, then you hit it with a hammer! <laughs> yeah, that should have been added in. <laughs> That, that would have been funny. <laughs> okay. Maybe, maybe that would be one step too far, a little too convoluted for the audience that film was aimed at, but yes. Like, what does Return to Sender mean? Kids, Return to Sender is... No! <laughs> people like, these days don't use letters. That's literally a thing now, because people don't use letters. So, yeah, they wouldn't know what Return to Sender means. Do the people write emails as Santa Claus now? Is that what happens? <laughs> yes, that is a thing that happens, actually. I've heard about that. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. There is a Santa Twitter account, I believe, that does take, uh, you know, Christmas lists from people or, you know, asking for a couple of things because it's Twitter and you can only, like, write... 70 characters or whatever. I... Mm. Uh, uh, hearing that makes me incredibly... I don't know. It feels like I'm having an out-of-body experience. What the heck is this world? This moment... This right here. This is Zero turning into an old man. Why is Santa on Twitter? And he has work to do. I get to enjoy Social. it. It's all for me. Social media is not 
You can't, you can't be checking your Twitter account, Santa. You gotta be making presents. <sighs> Santa, you're at the dinner table with Mrs. Claus, and you're just looking at your phone on Twitter. <laughs> what the hell are you doing? You're getting in fairness, so... Santa is absolutely a workaholic. He is constantly distracted during dinner. Like, his phone would not change that. It's always got things to do. Mrs. Claus uh, is sad and dejected and kind of lonely, but she bears with it because her husband is doing good work. As, as, as she enjoys her third glass of wine. I joined this show what, when I was like 18, 19. I'm 24 years old. Bang's one of the elves. I feel like I'm a million. Yeah, so... Anyway, many people who have never touched a Nintendo 64 or a GameCube. In fairness, a lot of people didn't touch a GameCube. That's not an age thing. Oh, Mario <clears throat> Sunshine? You mean that really old game? Uh, my first console was the Wii. Uh, How you doing, patient? You good? <laughs> You're trying my patience. Uh... I'm, st I'm I'm literally just turning into a corpse right now. Uh, you're still like six years younger than me. <laughs> there is, uh, I suppose there's one thing I can share. Hmm? I, I'm honestly uh, a bit confused about how well this went, this came across. My, my girlfriend said the other day that you should never wear shorts while sitting in a leather chair on a hot day. Context being that she was up in her house's at computers work stuff. And not with air conditioning. Not a good thing. So I I, I sympathized with that and asked if it was were hot and then I posted this after a moment of consideration. After she, about ten minutes later on this, she ranted about it, saying it's a massive tease or something. And when I shared it, a lot of people complimenting me on how smooth it was. I really. I really have no idea that I I would say was it is it really that is it really that impressive I don't I don't I don't see what it might be because it's coming from you which you know I would not have expected you to say something like that yeah Maybe the setup was just too perfect for me to resist <laughs> So, yeah, people are probably complimenting you for your chutzpah, I guess, of actually saying something like that because you're usually so polite and restrained with the things that you tend to say. So, yeah. And I still am. I would, I, I would never have said that if the context was such a perfect set. Hmm. Yeah, no. I, you, yeah. If, yeah, it was well received, so yeah, sure. Fair enough. All right, you know, it's, it's, sometimes you get a good setup of like, I was talking with, with my friends, and you know, like, we were like, oh, it's like, well, it's, it's like you're a fire type and I'm a grass type. It's like, you're super effective on me, and I'm like, you're not very effective on me. <laughs> and <laughs> sometimes you just gotta, you gotta take the, Take the shot where you can get it. Mm. Yeah, but that's that's just mean, isn't it? We that's all the, laugh. That's the point. Words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can say mean things if you're joking, and it's clear you're joking. Like, because yeah. everybody was laughing at first. It was great because uh, we were talking about our because our avatars were Pokemon, <clears> and <throat> yeah, I got the Score Bunny, and he had uh, Grookey. So Ugh. this is funny. Look, some people really like Grookey, okay? 
There aren't even monkeys in Britain. That's not a thing. It's... I know, which is why Gookie confuses me. I don't yeah, know what it's supposed to be. We have rabbits. That's a thing. Rabbits? Yeah. Rabbits. Rabbit. Like rabbit stew is a traditional dish, not, you know. Moss and pfeffer? Sorry, what? Moss and pfeffer? I don't know. I don't know what that means. <laughs> so. Not to be confused, though, with uh, Welsh rabbit, which is literally just cheese on toast. That's, <laughs> that's a different thing. German stew made from marinated uh, Not sure if you know much of a British history, mate, but I'm pretty sure we wouldn't uh, pick something in German as our national dish or a traditional dish. Probably would have just called it I, rabbit stew. I know about it thanks to Looney Tunes. Ah, okay. Thanks, Looney Tunes, for enlightening <clears throat> us about both the joys of Huss and Pfeffer and the horrors of war. I mean, video, ga video games and cartoons, they do tend to have some interesting things about it. I mean, there was... Little factoids. Was it a... I mean, I learned about the London Fog thanks to Persona. Thanks, Persona. The London Fog? As in, it's foggy in London? I don't know what that is. The London Fog was when acid rain level of stomach fell in the UK. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good times. Not really. No. <laughs> no. Uh, Industrial Revolution was kind of a bitch. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm hmm. So. We don't like talking about that. Bad things happen. Mm. Actually, we'd like talking about it a lot, making lots of stories about it. Okay. I don't think there's anything else that comes to mind, which is that strange since I've been gone for most of my at this point. Not really. Somehow Zero started this podcast saying he had nothing to talk about and then talked for half an hour, so I don't know. <laughs> I apologize for that, but J. Joe Jameson needs his Winmar files. I mean, Joe Joe Jameson? <laughs> Joe Joe Jameson. <sighs> now that should be some... Um... So... What? Oh... Just needed to make sure I noted that down, because that's... <laughs> I do have a recommendation this week. Cool. Let me do my thing first. Is that cool? Of course. I thought you just said you didn't have anything. No, Zero said you didn't have anything, and then talked for half an hour. That was the thing. Um, yeah, Bloodstained. The ri ritual of the that's always going to be a, th a title I'm going to have to yeah. think of like <laughs> once or twice before saying it because it's so similar to that other game that it's totally not um, is a very very good game I have finished it I did not 100% it I 99.5%ed it Oh no. Because oh, no. there are secret rooms that are hidden behind breakable walls and I couldn't be bothered to go and find them. So yeah. Uh it uh like I could probably have done so, like Google where are all the hidden rooms in Bloodstained. The amount of things in my Google search history that are just bloodstained and then usually cooking ingredients is probably gonna put me on a list somewhere. But <laughs> <laughs> like bloodstained soy sauce thankfully everything just comes up with like oh guides for bloodstained ritual of the night and not like ha here's how you can put blood in your soy sauce to give it that extra kick of yeah none of that thankfully but you know it's it's a fun game the side quests are kind of esoteric and hard to figure out sometimes which is annoying um the like some of the things that it requires you to do to get the good ending are also a little out there like things you wouldn't think to do 
Like, there is a power-up towards the late game where you can reverse gravity for yourself. You know, basically, the upside-down castle from Symphony of the Night. And that's great, but it expects you to use it in a place where you would expect it to not work. Like... Uh... I tried it in this one place where there's no ceiling to see what would happen. And if you do that, it reverses, you fall towards the sky, like the song. And as soon as you leave the skybox, it flips over again and drops you back down to the ground. But in order to progress the game, it requires you to do that in a place where you would expect that to happen and nothing else. So it's a little not great that it will only work, like, that it is on, only a useful thing to do in one specific location and nowhere else. It's, it's, it's kind of messed up. And yeah, there's, there's little bits and pieces towards the end of the game that are kind of like that in old school adventure game style where you have to do the exact right thing in the exact right place. It's a little annoying. And I did have to look it up. But, uh, yeah. Aside from that one gripe, it's a really well put together game. Just a lot of fun throughout. To the point where, now that I've finished it, I want to play it again. Oh, no. I like yeah. when a game does that. Yeah, I'm... Like, there is an alternate character that you can play as. I don't know whether Zero's met him yet. Hmm. He he has a very significant voice actor that you will probably recognize and expect to say Otacon at some point. Oh. Huh. Yeah. You I don't know whether he's actually you know connecting the dots there, but yeah, you can play as that guy. And I might do that, I, I might I not. Heard, I heard there are multiple characters. Uh, are you talking about the uh Gosh, I just made it to uh, Guy with the Big Sword. Yeah. Him. Yeah. You can play as him. I, I just got to him. Yeah. Uh, I assume playing as him is going to be basically the Richter to Alucard from Symphony of the Night, where it's basically a more traditional Castlevania game where you don't have all the equipment loadouts or any of that stuff. It's just play through the game like an action game, which, you know, fair enough. Fun. I'm. I might try that. I never liked the original Castlevania games for that kind of gameplay. It was never fun to me, but I might try that it. That was uh, also something, because um, I was listening to the uh, former best friends, now Super Beast cast, uh, Super, Castle Super Beast, that mm. um, podcast, um, where they were talking, where uh, Pat on it said the only thing you could really say against Bloodstain was that it's not Hollow Knight, and it's just I like Hollow Knight a lot, and I kind of feel that because it's very it's very traditional Castlevania from what I'm getting from playing it, which means that the movement has a sort of a that sort of traditional stiffness to it, at least at first. Yeah. And the way the the movement works in Hollow Knight is really fun and fluid. So you can kind of see there's a, at least from what I can tell so far, because I'm not that far in. Um, mm. But there's there's a definite difference. Um, I still think I'm gonna like Bloodstained a lot, yeah. but it's it's a very different. It's it, it doesn't have the refinement from years of working mm. with the genre, but it, it I, feels like I don't know in that way. If that makes sense, I don't know. I I I'm, bought. I bought Hollow Knight as well for like one pound fifty because of the Steam sale, because you know it's having that. Hey, participate in this weird race gimmick thing, and you can get extra discounts. So I did that and got Hollow Knight for like a quid. And I'm gonna play it. I'll try it, see how it is. But from what you're saying, it sounds more like, say a a Bloodborne to a Dark Souls kind of thing. Like it sounds like it's meant to be faster paced and more twitchy kind of platforming. 
is what it sounds like. If if you're talking about stiffness in Bloodstained, then... It's... Like, I'm talking about it, like, obviously there's there's a lot different between the two games, um, but they do kind of are that same sort of Metroidvania style, or Castlevania in in the case of that. I mean, that that more, you know... But that genre I'm, defining is more down to the progression than it is to the exact yeah. combat mechanic. What, I, what, I, what I'm getting at, though, is the immediate kind of first impressions on the feel. Um, because obviously you're probably going to get more abilities in Bloodstain that are going to change how your character moves. And that will probably help. But like as somebody who grew up on platformers and really can appreciate like the good physics on a character, it it feels n- nicer for me to move around as Hollow Knight than uh, than in Bloodstained. I mean, does Hollow Knight have that kind of progression of you get say faster or strong? You you know, you, you get gets like easier. You get you get movement bonuses, yeah, mm. and, and, along with a few other uh, abilities. Like, because that's the thing. If it starts that well then there's no up from there, is what it sounds like. Like, you start yeah. off in Bloodstained kind of slow, kind of heavy, and movement is a very deliberate thing that you have to think about, and you have... The backstep is an ability that you will probably use in the early game, and then stop using once it gets, like... Once you get mm. something like the movement speed increase stuff, you will probably stop using okay. it. Because you can move better at that point. I guess part of it is, is me coming in from perspective of somebody who is playing Hollow Knight with all the abilities unlocked, which is very different from, you know, obviously at the start. Um, but I don't know. It's it, it's hard for me to really put into words. It's how you jump and how you stop suddenly at, at certain moments. Yeah, it, it's it's very deliberate kind of movement, especially in the early game, where you need to think about when you're going to jump and where and how you're going to land. Like, you, like there are jumping attacks can be very useful if you time them right, because you can just attack just as you're landing and you get a second attack immediately because you landed, and it's got uh, that guess... kind of very specific. Uh, like, I guess, I don't know what the term, land cancel, I guess that would be the term for that. Yeah. Uh, There's, I've noted, I've been doing a little bit of land canceling, um, in terms of attacks and everything. It's mainly, um, and this is just something I'm probably gonna have to get used to, is it feels like there's a lot more lag on a lot of the movements. Mm. And I'm not, not sure if that's going to necessarily improve with everything i like the game a lot mm. um I, I should say that i'm not saying the game's bad or anything i'm just saying the movement doesn't feel as fluid as i would have liked and i'm hoping that the upgrades will change that i'm glad to hear another good review does omniac heavily recommended that i get hollow knight myself yeah. i bet is there anything else that i should out for Besides the controls. In which? Bloodstained or Hollow Knight? Hollow Knight. Or was uh, I... Zero? Did I misunderstand? Okay, completely? the one I was saying was feeling more stiff was Bloodstained. Oh. Hollow Knight feels very... Sorry, say that one more time. Hollow Knight feels very fluid. Oh. Especially once you get the upgrades. Yeah, okay. the, the one where he was complaining about the controls was Bloodstained, not... Hollow Knight. Unfavorable comparison. Got it. But I think I think also a problem is I haven't found a, a weapon that I really like yet. Hmm. And I'm, I'm kind of going through things. What options have you got? Uh, I got a variety of stuff. I've been using a great sword because I like the wide swing and I've also been swapping between a few other weapons as well. I'm going to Again, I'm not that far, and I've gone a bunch of weapons. I'm going to be experimenting with them today to see if I find one that really feels good to me. Mm. Yeah, like, I, early on, I really liked the rapier, because of course I did, because it's me. But 
I very quickly found that it's not exactly ideal for, you know, actually playing the game and trying to win. So <laughs> I switched to one-handed swords because I got, I happened to luck out and got a, a shard that upgrades your speed and uh, damage with one-handed swords, the sword ex expertise shard, I think. Is oh, that's it. really, that's, that's really interesting. I really want that. <laughs> yeah. Like... I got that, I was like, okay, I'm using one-handed swords now, that's how that's going to work, I'm going to upgrade the shit out of this thing, and I'm just going to use those from now on, and that's basically how it turned out, and by the time I got the one that upgraded Rapier's uh, the dagger expertise, because it does two weapons at once. Um, I just have one question. Shoot. Um, th this is very important to me. Uh, is there a dash, like an actual dash? As in, uh, not just yes. a back step, but like, like a, you can dash out of the way. Uh, like just to run forward and backwards and such. Yeah. Yes, there is, but you only get it in the final dungeon. Okay. There are other methods to increase your movement speed, which uh, you will get to a library eventually, and you will meet a dude who is voiced by someone interesting. And has a very interesting character design that will be recognizable. And you can borrow books from him, and one of them will increase your movement speed. Okay, because I, I really, I really want to dash. I think that will make a huge difference for me. It does. But... It makes a massive difference to, difference to the feel of the combat. Like New Game Plus is probably going to feel completely different playing the game. Yeah. Because um, one of the first things you get in Hall Knight is the dash. And that's very important because Hall Knight is very, in terms of how you played it, it's, with bosses, it can feel a bit like Dark Souls-ish, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, where, yeah, dodging is very, very important. But, um, yeah, definitely uh, think that the movement speed increases and everything is going to help that game feel a lot better. But again, it's 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 the sort of thing. Whenever you play a, a Metroidvania, Castlevania, at the very start, it doesn't feel that great because all the movement stuff that makes it feel great is later. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're probably right in that the upgrades for movement speed and things like that probably come way too late in the game. I will agree with you on that. It probably should have been quite a bit earlier. Like. I'm thinking of one specific power-up that could probably have been swapped for the movement speed thing, which is actually entirely optional. You, there is a very specific thing you have to do to get it, and you don't have to do it at all. It's not like a required power-up. Mm. But I very much recommend getting it, because it's very fun to use. Because it's not just a dash, it's like a charge kind of thing. So... Ooh. You know, like, did you play Shadow Complex? Uh, no, I didn't. No, okay. Well, it's like, you just hold down the button. It's a directional power, I think. No, it's transformation yeah. power. So you just hold down the right bumper, or R1, and push in a direction, and you will charge in that direction at high speed, and if you run into an enemy, you will damage them. And you can upgrade it so it does more damage. Okay. So, I like that. at some point in the game, the lowest level mooks you can just charge right through and kill instantly. Yeah. Because I, I was noticing the back step in particular <clears throat> is really bad in this game. Yeah, you have to time it very well. <laughs> it's something. And, and if you don't, and even if you time it well, you, you don't have any iframes in it, from what I can tell. Uh, no, not really. It's just get you out of the way of a thing before it happens. Yeah. So, yeah, that you very quickly find things that will help you with that sort of thing that are better options than the back the back step. Like there are multiple shield type shards where you can just hit the button and it will block whatever's going to hit you. Okay, and I think yeah. they favor that's, they favor that more than for. more than dancing around. They favor that sort of thing because movement and defensive options are the things I'm feeling like I'm lacking right now. So. 
I think if I can get those two, it's, it's going to make a world of difference. Yeah. Do whatever you can to upgrade your luck early, because that's what, uh, you know, contributes to item and shard drops. Well, I have no money right now, so woo. That's going to be a problem going forward. <laughs> They're a little stingy with money, so you know, maybe have a guide open for how to I find an eight bit materials. coin though. I found an eight bit coin though, and I made a nice great sword. So right, you are going to want to get the sword expertise uh, thing, the shard, which. You can get very early. It's in one of the first rooms of the castle. Um, but you will want that so you can craft, with the alchemy stuff, a greatsword expertise shard. Oh. Yes. Okay. That's how you do that. So. Well, thank you for the advice. Yeah. You do anything else? Do you do anything else this week? Uh, not really. Uh, the quest I've been running has uh, hit hit a little bit of a roadblock where I asked people to come up with a plan for how to do things, and no one came up with anything for three days. So I'm like, hey, you guys, it's, it's supposed to be like interactive fiction, not just yeah. So if you could, you know, I gave you lots of info on your options. You want to pick something? That'd be. It has to be multiple choice. Just poking. It's the only way. Apparently, because just saying, hey, come up with something, gave me nothing until I started prodding people into actually coming up with ideas. So, yeah. Uh, hmm. I guess lessons are being learned for that sort of thing. Yeah. But that's pretty much it, yeah. So, that's my week. Oh, and right. on Thursday, I'm going to be house-sitting for my parents because they are getting a stair lift fitted and they have to be at the hospital for that day. So that's mm. going to be... I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Probably just going to take my phone and just watch YouTube videos or something. Oh, if I can know. Yay! Watch the tubes. Yeah. Consume product. I have no idea who that is from that meme, but I keep seeing it places. So, yeah, that's pretty much me. Uh, patient, you had a recommendation. Yes, hold on a moment. You... I'm not sure what. I can't recall what name of this particular Yu Gi Oh! story, but it's one that has very, very little. I suppose it was the fact that it seemed in vain. A different kind of game than just the monsters that took over the thing. I don't know. We're losing you a little bit there, patient. <sighs> Glass. <sighs> this story is. Not remotely focused around the rest of the series themes. It's a series of mind games in this while trying to cater to the whims of an insane old. It's just the premise is that Pegasus kidnaps Seto Kaiba and locked in a prison cell like where he is he's likely to be Pe Pegasus's prisoner for the rest of his so what he has to do is figure out the whys of his current situation and how of the situation it goes on for a long time it's like I said a lot of mind games a very interesting portrayal of Pegasus not out of character it's decidedly and 
as I didn't particularly like, but it was, it just can't, I can't get it out of my head to say. It's, it's written at least, so hmm. I recommend it. Alright, thank you. Cool. Uh, hey, Zero, did the thing yeah. go through? Uh, not yet. Okay, cool. My payments have gone through, but I guess uh, my receipts have not, so I guess that's still yeah. working. I out. haven't gotten an email yet, so... Yeah. Alright, so we'll do that next week. That's cool. Uh, so I guess thanks for listening to the Fan of Flux podcast, Old Man Edition. Uh, nice <laughs> hour and twenty podcast that was. Um, Longer than you thought. <laughs> yeah, because we kept talking about how the youngins don't know about all the things that we's done known about because we was old and thirty. Yeah. All right, so. Uh, I look forward to just every now and then, like every month or so, just bringing up the fact that I'm 30 and feeling old until I'm 31, and then I stop giving a shit. So that's going to be <laughs> a thing to look forward to. Um, if you would like to get in contact with us, you can do so through the YouTube channel through the comments or through a public Discord where you can uh, ask us about old man shit, where, you know, both figuratively and literally, if you feel like it, I don't know. I, my <laughs> why why i don't judge people thank you um maybe you should actually yeah it's totally a lie i judge a lot of people um <laughs> yeah link for that is in the description though uh also linked in the description is our patreon page if you would like to donate on patreon we very much appreciate it uh once again thanks for listening to the have a nice day and bye Winroar. Mm.